Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids, where we've got some very spicy news for this weekend's Summon Rush event, right? This is the Summon Rush. You're going to need to complete at least a bit of it, pretty much, in order to get uh, our boy Nishak Vermin Lord. I was going to do a video on him today. I think I might actually, because now it's a couple of news videos here today, I might actually push that video to tomorrow. So check back tomorrow to see how he does in Hydra. Let me spoil this much for you. I think you're going to really want to watch the video. He's a very interesting champ for Hydra. He's got some big pros, some big cons. You'll need to see the video to see, right? But let's dive into this. So why do I say this is spicy? Well, first of all, guys, let's get the spiciest part out of the way first. We are going to have a guaranteed legendary event for Eilil from the Sylvan Watchers for 110 Void Shards. This is by far the most expensive we've had from Void Shards. Um, it's, it's an interesting one. So if you have those saved up, right, getting a Void Legendary for 110 Void Shards is actually a very good deal if you've got those shards saved up already, uh, if they are good. And that for me is the big question mark is, is Eilil even any good? I did some testing on this guy and basically, the problem that you run into is that he just doesn't hit very hard. Um, and for example, Pierce the Carapace here, his A2, says it ignores all these buffs. You think this is great. The problem is it doesn't ignore shields. So, for example, in the case of Stone Skin, <laughs> yes, you ignore the Stone Skin damage reduction, but you don't ignore the Stone Skin shield. So he's actually really bad at killing people through Stone Skin, especially if they've got reaction on. He's not going to come close to breaking the shield. So yeah, I just found this to be a problem, is that he's just very... He just doesn't do much damage, is honestly the thing. The utility of his kit, though, is very good. His passive is fantastic. He gets an absolute ton of turn meter. So he actually ends up being a pretty quick champion, even when built with no speed. He's going to get a bunch of HP and defense for building up his attack. That's really good, too. His A1 cannot be resisted and steals all buffs. That's very good. The A2 is actually... It's okay... Uh, if he kills an enemy, you fully heals him, gives him stone skin. That's really good, but it doesn't hit super hard. He has an AoE here as well. I don't know. Honestly, in my honest opinion, in my honest opinion, if I ha I'm actually slightly short. I don't have enough to pull for him, so I'm not gonna. Uh, I'm actually nine shards short. But let let's say clan boss is super kind or something, and I get nine void shards. Uh, I get three void shards every day for the next few days. Would I pull 110 for Eilil? To be honest, I would not. And the reason is, I just don't think he's that good. And I think with Polymorph being in the game, and more and more people are going to be awakening more and more Polymorph blessings for Arena, I think he comes into Arena and he's stripping off buffs, he's stealing buffs. This dude's just going to get Polymorph constantly. So, yeah, I think he's weak, and I think the future for him is a bit grim. It is always possible Plarium comes in and, and buffs his damage. I think that's always possible, and he could end up being a monster. But um, yeah, I think it's a risk, right? I think that is the risk. Genuinely, right now, I think this champion is only average, to be honest. Uh, he's got really cool utility, really cool passive effects, but he doesn't hit hard. Um, if he got buffed to hit harder, he might be might be stronger. I think it's a little less likely. I'm going to have a showcase on Jorgit here, the Breaker, soon. This guy comes in and he also has uh, ignore stone skin here, but he ignores shield as well. He's way better and he hits massively harder. Uh, the difference between Jorgid and Eilil is that Eilil is very tanky and he brings a lot of protection and a lot of passive stuff, whereas Jorgid just hits really ridiculously hard, uh, which is more so probably what you want. So yeah, I don't know. It's up to you. It's, it's a gamble. It's a big gamble. I mean, uh, a Void Legendary out of 110 Void Shards is still actually very good. Um, but uh, I just don't know if the champion is going to be good ever. It's a gamble. Now, we also have a 10x on. So if you're not interested in pulling those voids, well, what are the 10x champions? And the theme of the 10x is, surprise, surprise, sleep. Sleep is the theme. So first of all, we have Chancellor Yasmin coming in. Pretty underwhelming champion. Uh, she has some buff strip and then sleeps enemies who have active buffs. This is really not good. She has a bit of a heal. Yeah, honestly, Yasmin, don't bother. She's not worth your time. There's so many good champions and banner lords, especially now you've got like, you've got Rhonda, right? Everyone will have Rhonda. Um, 
you know, Archmage is in there, Stag Knight's in there, Ursula. Like, there's so many insane champions. I think she's she's just a, a waste. I would never build her. Next up, we've got a 10x for Canelia. So this is one that actually probably a lot of people are going to be hoping to pull. She can solo so many of the bosses in Doom Tower. She can solo Bommel 90. Uh, now, YST has done a video recently showing how you can do that. So she is incredible. Uh, she's actually really good for Arena with this move as well. The AoE Sleep that then gets replaced with Fear. Great champion. Uh, this move here is what allows her to solo. Is that it does this massive heal whenever she takes damage. So she keeps full healing herself. It's it's quite quite crazy. Got really good base stats. 109 base speed, for example. Uh, so yeah, good 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 champion. Uh, for the Sand Devil's Fortress, I don't think that's good. Look, a one turn sleep on a three turn cooldown for Sand Devil, no good. Use Muck Stalker, two turn sleep, two turn cooldown. Muck Stalker is much better. Um, but yeah, I think Canelia is a good champion though. Now, even better than that, I think, well, actually, I don't know. I guess Canelia is very useful, but Allure is, you know, pretty much mandatory for farming Fire Knight quickly for most people. Uh, she can be replaced by. Who's that guy that everyone thinks sucks, but it's actually really good in Sacred Order? She, he, she ultimately gets replaced by, yeah, Hull's Ring. Hull's Ring replaces her ultimately, but uh, Allure is fantastic, right? This A1 is just nuts, right? Three hits at random, decreased turn meter by 75% tw uh, in each crit, so 75% total. Dark Fae, amazing. Uh, Fire Knight, absolutely amazing. She really hard carries those teams, so she is super good. Yeah, her and Canelia, both very good. You'll be very happy to get either one. Then we have our, uh, let's go into the ancient and sacred legendaries that are boosted. And the first one is extremely good. It's Prince Kaimar. Fallen off a bit in arena because of polymorph and stone skin really punishes this abyssal gaze move. Uh, but he's just fantastic champion because of this full reset. Opens up a lot of speed farm teams that you couldn't otherwise use. So Kaimar, yeah, I think Kaimar is absolutely amazing. For a lot of people, probably one of their most wanted champions. One of the best legendaries in the game, no question. So you'd be very happy to get him. We also have Gaius the Gleeful. It's going to be included there. Kaimar, yeah, he's sleeping on his A2. Gaius has a sleep here as well. Uh, Kaimar maybe could have some use, maybe for the dungeon, but I haven't seen too many teams really using Kaimar. So I, I, I don't feel like, I feel like very few of these champions so far have been actually good for the dungeon, right? The new dungeon, despite sleep being a thing. They're just not relevant for it, really. Uh, but Gaius is a great champ for Arena. The AoE with sleep and two bombs. He blows up bombs when he dies. He can put out more bombs with his passive. He ignores unkillable with his A3. Really great champion, actually. Very, very good for Arena. Um, very powerful in stone skin, for example. Great champion and a lot of fun to play with. Then we've got the new champion, Noct. So this is the first one that is actually, I think, good for the new dungeon. He comes in with a sleep on a three turn cooldown for one turn. This isn't great, again, but he brings an ally protection and continuous heal on everyone. And then whenever an ally is attacked under ally protection, he's got a chance to sleep. So he basically sleeps the boss at the start of the boss's turn. So I think there's some potential there. To be honest, I haven't seen that many teams actually uh, using Noct because not many people have him as well. But I'd be curious. I haven't seen, like I said, I haven't seen that many teams that would rely on Noct. But he could, uh, I think he's a very good progression champion. He's going to be really good at some of those dungeons. He's going to help you in a lot of places. So again, I think if you got Noct as an earlier player, I think you'd be very happy. I just don't know if he's how good he is end game for the new dungeon yet because i just haven't seen anyone do it yet uh, and then we come to the voids and we've got two very nice voids going alongside this 10x to really uh, the guaranteed i should say to tempt you in seer is the epic great epic uh this karma burn move best enemy max hp nuke pretty much you know for wave clearing uh just rips through waves like there's no like it's no one's business you do need a bunch of champions to set her up is sort of the issue right because it's a four turn cooldown she's very reliant on prince kaimars pretty much um but very easy way to clear through doom tower hard to nuke through higher level dungeons very quickly uh, so she's great for that now there are alternatives for sure um a lot more alter alternatives than there used to be but she's still an amazing champion and for a lot of people one of their most wanted champs um so if you're close to ep uh, epic mercy on void shards it might be worth going for it and then a champion again that I think I have seen people use to good success. Chigor is the Void Legendary that is in the 10X. This is a champion I have seen used to good success in Sand Golem because he has a 75% chance to sleep on his A1. 
and he instantly attacks enemies with his default skill whenever they receive poison debuffs placed by this champion. So if he gets poisons onto the boss, he'll actually go in and sleep the boss at the start of his turn. Uh, so you can stop the boss doing his moves, which is very, very good. Now, it's not 100%, it's 75%. You can obviously with Masteries increase that to 80%, but still, you know, a four in five, there's still a 20% chance, one in five, that it fails. Uh, but nonetheless, he's still very, very, very good, I think, for this new boss. And I have seen teams built around Chikura that work. So he is pretty cool. That being said, I think for this new dungeon, there's been a lot of teams that are viable. Um, so to be honest with you, I'm not too pushed, really. I wouldn't pull any of these voids. I'd be saving my voids for uh, possible shard events over Christmas. Um, yeah, I think I personally, I would save... Uh, and then, hey, look, I think you might be pulling some sacreds, maybe a few voids if you have to, to complete the summon rush. We'll see how many points the summon rush ends up being, because I think this fusion is definitely worth going for. Um, yeah, I think if you got pretty much any of those epics, apart from Chancellor Yasmin, who's pretty rubbish, but all those epics are good. They're going to be helpful for you progressing in the game. And all the legendaries are, are pretty much great fun, at least mixed in terms of the new dungeon but very good i think a lot of people are going to be pulling hoping for that kaimar to be honest and they're going to be okay if they pick up a noct um but yeah we'll see let me know what you're planning to do like i said 10x events are pretty terrible i'm just pulling the minimum required for summon rush and then i'm saving up for whatever events come next weekend it's christmas weekend so we'll see guys thank you for watching be smart about your pulls and i'll see you all next time bye bye we're not on the test server by the way i was just recording uh, for the fusion. I forgot to take that off. Whoops. See you next time. Bye-bye.